to give you an update, and then we're going to have special prayer for Aaliyah. Last week, they let her come home from the hospital. Um, she had surgery. She was recovering really well. Um, they let her come home, and while she was at home, she started complaining that her chest was hurting her. So they thought that it was just from the incision that she had. So they gave her pain medications that didn't help. Um, and they eventually took her to back to the hospital. The hospital thought the same thing. Well, it's just because of the incision they made in her chest. And they gave her the maximum amount of painkillers they could give her and realized this wasn't doing anything for her. They finally did, I think, was it a CT scan? And they found that both of her lungs had collapsed. Also, she had an infection in her lungs. And so they said that they had to take care of the infection. They were treating her for that. She eventually had to be put on a breathing machine. Um, and they did some more scans and tests, and they found out that she had two other, were they ventricles, that were leaking. Two things, you know, she already had one operation done for her heart, and they found two other valves that were leaking. So this is what they had told Lester, and that is there was three options, and Monday they're going to have a consultation with all the surgeons. That was to operate on her again, fix those two leaking valves, to give her medication, and maybe within a year up to three years, they could hold off, but eventually she will have to have this operation. Or the next thing was a total heart transplant. So um, she has been um, under sedation for the last uh, seven to eight days. They're hoping today to pull out her breathing apparatus. Um, but then, like I said, Monday they will consult and let Lester and Nicole decide where they want to go. I asked Lester, out of the three options, what do you and Nicole want? And they said that they want to be able to get her strong enough to do the operation and get it done and over and completed. Uh, they think that that would be the best thing. They don't want to have to have her wait a year or two and then go through that whole thing again. And they definitely didn't like the idea of a heart transplant. So what we want to do now is I would like to ask Ricky and Chuck if you guys can come up here. And I would like to have all of us be in the spirit of prayer. I'm going to ask Ricky to pray first, then Chuck, and then I will pray. Um, let's stay right down here. This. <laughs> Ricky, you have prayer first. Listen, let all of us, if we can, let us see you. Father, as we kneel here, we come with your throne room to ask you to reach your mighty hand down and touch our friend Aaliyah, to give her a loving touch, and I pray that you give her first the peace that surpasses all understanding, and that she feel your presence, and she feel your Holy Spirit. I pray that you just bless the doctors around her and the nurses, that they would know which way to go and what to do for her, but I pray that if it, if it be in your will, that she would be healed today, Lord. Amen. I pray that you just bless and touch and May they feel your presence. Loving Father, I lift up to you Aaliyah Davis, a child 10 years of age. This is a prayer which I titled, I Don't Know. I don't know Aaliyah. I've never met her. I don't know what has caused this complication in her young body. I do know that sin is the result of all of our complications, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So I do know that you are the great physician for all emotional, physical, and spiritual illnesses. So I lift this 10-year-old child up to you in prayer and ask you to give her, at this point in her life, 
an understanding and an appreciation of your presence with her physically, that through her siblings and her parents she may feel your emotional presence to comfort her. And spiritually, I ask you to personally reach her mind at her level of understanding at this point in her life and allow her to experience the peace that you want for her to experience. And as she matures, if it is your will for her to survive this, may she recognize that this experience in her life has been allowed by you so that she can now witness to others Amen. as to your desire for us to completely trust you in every aspect of our lives, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And we thank you for answering this request because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, your word says that where two or more are gathered, and if we agree on anything, you will do it. And Father, we have a church full of people, and we're in agreement that we pray for your will to be done in Aaliyah's life. What we pray for, Lord, is a miracle. And you are a God of miracles. Father, I pray that you will touch her heart, that you will heal it, that the surgeons won't have to open her up again. Father, I pray that you will be with her and help her through this time. Lord, not only her, but we say a special prayer for Lester, for Nicole, for what they're going through, seeing their daughter there, all that she's gone through in the last two, three weeks. Father, I pray for Nicole, that you be close to her, that you strengthen her. She may not understand why, but Lord, I know she knows you. And that's enough. Father, I pray that you will draw close to her and again give her that peace. Pray that you be with Lester. As the spiritual leader of his family, Lord, he is trying to be strong for both his wife, his daughter, and the rest of his children. But Lord, in talking to him, I can hear it and he's expressed the weight that this has been on his heart. Father, draw close to him as well. Let them know that whatever your will is, you're in control, that you have a plan, and that you love us. Father, I pray all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.